because I, I I'm sorry. And I know if you're of a certain age or whatever your interests are, this sounds silly. However, that's life. This is a sign of the times. And if celebrities go into their, their social media platforms and start unfollowing and taking down posts like, yes, how many times in a row do we need to learn this means something? I, I, I'll never forget telling people how I first found out that something was going crazy when Kevin Durant was about to sign with the Warriors. It's the first indicator. The news had not broken yet. But somebody sent me a picture. They go, look at Andrew Bogut's Twitter. And I go straight to Andrew Bogut's Twitter. And he's in the Australian national jersey. And... It says Andrew Bogut and like his bio, Center Australia. That's not what it had said when I woke up in the morning. He was the Warrior Center. Right. Well, an hour later, Kevin Durant was on the Warriors and Andrew Bogut wasn't. So do I think these things mean something? Yes. And if you're just joining us, Clay Thompson has unfollowed the Warriors on Instagram. He has taken down a number of recent photos that depict him with the Warriors or in Warriors uh, paraphernalia. Not all of them. If you go back two years, you can still find one of him in a Warrior jersey. But, look, call me crazy. Call me silly. I think this means everything. And if, I, and if you ask me what I think, think it means, I mean, I think he's gone. And, and this whole, like, oh, but Mark, it's the tampering period. They know. There are offers being made right now. There are things being said to agents. They are being presented to the teams, and the teams are saying, "Well, no, we're we're not going to do that." Well, we're, even if it's just the Warriors, if you know, correct, he's, and he can talk to the Warriors, they could sign him right now, right? But he knows if he's got thirty mil on the table from Philly, and he also knows if he has twenty five million on the table from the Warriors or not. And if the Warriors made an offer, and he's come back at them and said, "Hey, look." I've got these other offers. Can you come close to matching it? And the Warriors basically are saying, you know, this is as high as we're able to go, Clay. Oh. And, you know, it's hard to it's hard to, to say this to you, but we're not going to be able to to match whatever you think you might be able to get out there. Then that's it. It's a wrap. 888-957-9570. Instead, we'll take your calls on what you think this means. Do you think it's a big deal or not? I think it's massive. He does still follow the Santa Cruz Warriors. Maybe he's just been sent well, down. There you go. There you go. Maybe that's options? what it is. Marco it, Luciano, Clay Thompson, <laughs> same thing. I just, <laughs> this is a huge thing. I think it's massive. It's massive. I can't help but still giggle at the fact that this is how things happen now in 2024. So I'll put that, the part aside that I do think that it is hilarious that it's massive and just revert back to the fact that I do think that this is massive because this is how things go. Sure. If a player on June 14th, who can't sign with another team until July 1st, he could sign with the Warriors. So the thinking would be, my assumption would be, he's been in conversation with the Warriors. I think that Clay Thompson would like to be a Warrior if the price was right, if the deal was right, if the years were right, if the role was good, if everything lined up with what Clay wanted. I do think that Clay would like to still be a Golden State Warrior, but on June 14th, 17 days away from the official start, of the free agency period, if he is now at this point scrubbing his Instagram and unfollowing the Warriors, that tells me that there's been an indication behind the scenes that we're not going to be able to meet all the things that you want, Clay. I, I think it proves that he wants to stay with the Warriors. This is not the move of somebody who's like, I think I would like to put a, an offering out to the public today. That's not what he's doing. He's ticked. Right. He's mad. This is not something you don't take your girl off of all the pictures in the history of your Instagram page because, you know, she was 10 minutes late to dinner. You do it when you break up. They're breaking up. That's what this says to me. Are they blocked? Can we tell if, if he's blocked, know. the Warriors? <laughs> and do we know if he's now following 
I don't know, Orlando right. or Oklahoma City. We can look. Or whatever other of the Here, what do you want me potential to search? suitors. I, what do you want me to search? I'm in. I'm in uh, Orlando's the one that I'm everybody all, thinks is the hot uh, the I'm, hot destination. I'm all up in Clay Thompson's IG right now. If Clay, are you going to slide right. into his DMs? Yeah, all right. We're going is to, Clay following the Orlando Magic? Right, because if he up. is, Orlando. well, then let's just go ahead and skip ahead no. to July 1st. No, he's not. He's not following the Orlando Magic. He okay. is following Andre Iguodala. There you go. <laughs> Uh, yep. Which is, I mean, his Twitter is pretty, pretty awesome. His handle, he has at Andre. He's correct. He's Andre, which is amazing. It's pretty badass. Yeah, because there's other Andres. I would assume so. I mean, Andre, but he gets it. Andre three thousand. Andre Dawson. Andre the giant. Andre the giant. In peace. <laughs> Andre Agassi. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of them. I'm looking at who comes up when you first just hit on Clay Thompson followers, not followers, following. Yeah. People he's following. Cold. More than a thousand, so it's tough. Thirteen hundred fifteen, but just off the top, he's following Kobe Bryant, Iguodala, Colin Kaepernick, Sam Darnold, Nico Mannion, um, Kenyon Martin, Brandon Crawford, Kevin Durant, Tony Finau, Hunter Pence, Draymond Green, Matt Barnes, Carly Lloyd, Reggie Bush, Aisha Curry, George Kittle. Justin Timberlake, not the Warriors. Bancaro? Uh, One of the various Wagners? <laughs> Let's see, Paolo? No, there's no Paolos. Okay. There's no Paolos. And no uh, what about Mo Wagner? or Franz Wagner? No, there's no Wagners okay. or Wagners, for that matter, neither. Good. Yeah. All right. No. So, well, all right. What about, Phil? let's see. Maybe Carol, he's just mad. Philadelphia. Nope, he's not following the Sixers either. Okay, Joel Embiid, no. No. Tyrese Maxey. They're breaking up. Yeah. I think you're right. And I said this weeks, if not months ago, I thought that he was going to leave. And it was less less of a thing then, but as you start to look at everything here in mid-June and you look at the tea leaves, or as you like to say, the breadcrumbs, the breadcrumbs are leading you in a certain direction, and that direction is not one where he would stay. I just want everyone to remember also, like, what happens on July 1st? The clock strikes midnight, and Woj and Shams start firing out new deals at 12.01. Why? Why is everybody ready to sign? They're not even allowed to talk to each other until 12. And you got a deal hacked out, a multi-million dollar deal in 38 seconds? Yeah. These some com- good agent work. conversations are happening right now. Right now, they've been happening. They're breaking up. I, uh, unless he's like just got a sick sense of humor, and I don't feel like he does. He I, doesn't strike me as being cut from that cloth. No, he wouldn't do that to the fans because he's not mad at the fans. Right. Of all the people Clay's been mad at for the last year and a half, there are a lot. There's Warrior execs. There's Draymond. There's Devin Booker. The Jaron Jackson Jr., Draymond, did I already say that? He's been mad at a lot of people, not Warrior fans. And if this were a joke, that'd be the only people who 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 lose. It'd be the Warrior fans. Where he's playing a joke on you. Ha ha, I'm actually staying. Yeah. Like, that doesn't feel like Clay to me. I would imagine he's already working on his thank you, Warrior fans, IG post that we all put up now. Or, you know, it used to be you'd take out a page in the local newspaper, you'd take out a full-page ad, and you'd thank the fans for all the great times and wish them wish them well and say how you'll always be a Warriors and all the rest of that. He's probably already put that together for his Instagram so when the signing can become official. We'll, we'll get to some calls here in a second if you want to, uh, if you want to dive in. 888-957-9570. Do you think this is a big deal? What do you think it means? Um... Clay Thompson has unfollowed the Warriors on Instagram. Clay Thompson has removed a number of recent pictures depicting him in a Warriors uniform. That has just gone down within the last half hour or so. And it is June 14th. We are flying toward July. Conversations are ongoing. And what did I say at the beginning of this week and late last week? You can hear it from the beat writers. It's as if the Warriors dispatched the people who cover them to start getting the fan base ready for this. They've all said it. Slates, 
Kawakami, Marcus Thompson, we can keep going. They've all said, not looking good. I heard Fidel on with you yesterday, 50-50. 50-50. Pretty good. Yeah, like 50-50. They've all said it. And there's a reason uh, that the Warriors are not sort of like pulling back on that at all. I'm not saying the Warriors would come out and make a public statement, but believe you me, if beat writers are out in public saying something that's like, not what the Warriors want out there, their phone will ring. Their phone will ring. Ray will call them and be like, hey, ah, well, let just let you know a little some I can't tell you everything, but here's a couple things to think about with regard to what's going on here in Warrior Land. Because they don't want that out there if it's if it's kind of not representative of them. Right. But I like I know we are in a way, jumping the gun. I can't report anything to you. I can only tell you as a human being what's going on inside my gut. And I have never been more confident than I am in this moment on this day, 4.15 in the afternoon on June 14th, 2024. I have never been more resigned to the fact that Clay Thompson's days as a warrior are done. Yeah, you can look at all of the pieces of evidence before today, before the Instagram scrubbing or the unfollowing and the scrubbing of pictures of Clay in a Warriors uniform. You mentioned some of the beat reporters and the things that they've said, and Nick Friedle yesterday, and even going back to what we know about the luxury tax and Joe Lacob talking about not wanting to go over the second apron again, and how do you stay under the second apron with all the the money that you're already spending on the players that you already have. And you talk about how everybody wants him to add a player. You can't keep clay at a decent number, a number that he's going to be able to get elsewhere and go out and add another player. Those two things are, cannot be equally true. So you've got a spot where clay is going to get more and he's going to get more elsewhere. And the Warriors want to improve anyway. So I've thought all along that he's going to be gone. And today just gives you a little bit more of an indication of where this thing might be headed. Well, and I, I'd say this as well. This is another thing for, for, for those of you who want to weigh in at 888-957-9570. Uh, those of you who want to weigh in, I, I think it's not unfair for us to start imagining how this feels to you. We don't know, know that Clay is gone. Certainly feels like that to me. And if you agree, how does that make you feel as a Warrior fan? Are you are are you kind of are you ready for this? Have you been ready for this? Are you not ready for this? But Clay Thompson, this is the other big piece for me. I never try to act like we really know these people, unless we do. Like some people in the media do have that relationship with people. Um but there are things that we know about Clay Thompson, and this is completely something he would do if confronted with something that bothered him in terms of a conversation at the executive level with the Warriors. This is exactly how Clay would react. It doesn't surprise me at all. Um, and in fact, if he's feeling um, spurned, if he's feeling frustrated by the way the Warriors are treating him through this process, in a way, this is a last-ditch effort to change it, you know? Because you could say, well, like, if he's going to go play for the Sixers, and well, then just go play for the Sixers. Sign your deal and move on, and everything's fine. But that's why I said what I said 10 minutes ago, which is that I firmly believe that this proves that Clay really still wants to be a Warrior because he's mad, he's angry, and he's acting out and he's doing the one thing that he's allowed to do on June 14th to signal to you Warrior fans something is amiss. Something is not right. Something is uncomfortable. And, and, and if we go ahead and sort of send that veiled message out there and there's a flood of fans who are like, that's it! Turn it in my tickets! Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is the only thing that he can do to get it off of his chest. He's not allowed to come out and say it right now. 
He's not allowed to. I mean, you could. I mean, he definitely could, you, but it's not going to do yourself a lot of uh, favors when you, you have other teams that might be still trying to bid for your services. My point, portions of what you can't say. You can't come out and be like, I got a $30 million offer on the table of from course. Philly. Right? You can't do that. You could come out and say, my time with the Warriors is up. I'm going to definitely play somewhere else. But that, do doesn't, that. that doesn't serve you well in the free agent market because theoretically, another team out there who hasn't made an offer to you is thinking that they're going to be bidding against the Warriors among other teams because the Warriors have said that they want to keep him. And this is just the the passive aggressive nature of what we do now in these free agency periods that haven't even started yet. Because you're right, there's only a few things that he can do to get his message out there. And he can, you know, he can leak it to the media through his agent and you know, Clay's not happy with the Warriors offer and all those other things, but none of that serves him well either. Clay's in a spot where he kind of has to sit there and just wait. Even if he does have an offer out there, and I'm sure he doesn't have an offer offer, but I'm sure they've had conversations where teams are like, yeah, we're, we're thinking about, you know, this is probably what we're going to give you in the offseason. We, we'd like to have you. I don't know if he has ironclad offers, but they have enough feelers out there to where they know Clay and his agent, they know what the ballpark will be for whatever team is trying to get his services. I bet he totally has ironclad offers. Yeah, I don't know that. I, 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 I completely bet that, that he would. I think. I, I mean, would bet that he knows how much he's sure. going to be able to make. Sure. And he also knows what the Warriors are willing to pay him. And if he's gone back to the Warriors and you know his agent saying, "Hey, you know, we're hearing whispers that you know there's a team out there that's going to give us you know three years and and seventy five million. How do you feel about that? And the Warriors are like, well, that's too rich for our blood. Are you sure you don't want to negotiate with us on that? And the Warriors are saying, no, nah, we, that's we're not gonna, well, we're not doing three years, I, I, and twenty five a year is gonna be too much for us. I firmly believe this is about, and it always has been, about more than money. Sure, it's I about role. I, I right? don't, yeah, I, I think it's about role. It's about respect. It's about, it, it's about how you package this. It's about how you see me. It's about all of the the experiences that they've that they've had together. It, it it's about all of those things. I don't think it's nearly as offensive as we make it out to be if Clay Thompson goes, Hey, the Knicks just offered me thirty two million a year. And the Warriors are like, dude, we want we want you back so badly, but like that's just we can't do that. We can't do that. Like we're more in the neighborhood of eighteen to twenty. And Clay's like, well, that, that, that's not enough for me. And they're like, well, I, I, we totally get it. Yeah, I, I, I hate that we're in this situation. That's not that offensive. What's offensive is, yeah, so Clay, here's our pitch. We want you to be our sixth man for the remainder of your career. That's where you start scrubbing stuff. That's where you get unfollowed. Because even though I don't think that's a crazy thought, I think he thinks that's a crazy thought. What do we know about Clay Thompson? Clay still thinks he's Clay Thompson. Yeah. And factually he is, but you know what I mean by yeah. that. He he still thinks he's that dude. And and that's great if he does. Who knows? He may end up being right. But that's where I think this gets emotional for him and uh, and offensive. And and probably leads to something like this. Right, and I do think that the money is a big part of it, and it's the role, it's everything. And if the Warriors see him in a way that another team doesn't see him, and I'm sure you're right about them having feelers, and maybe they have an ironclad offer or whatever that they have out there, it doesn't matter. But his perception or the reality is that he's going to be able to get something elsewhere that the Warriors are unwilling to get him. And so if he comes to that realization today that the Warriors aren't going to meet him where he needs to be met, well, then this is where we arrive. I find there's one other way I could, I, I, I bet that this could land in an offensive way for Clay Thompson, and it's this. Hey, Clay, so we really, really, we want to do something. We really want you back on the team. But here's the thing. We're just not going to be ready to talk about it for the first week and a half of July. We got a lot of other things cooking. We kind of got to see how they're all going to fall. Might be interested in acquiring Jimmy Butler. And Clay's like, an older wing? I thought I thought you told me that you wanted to kind of create a pathway for some of the younger players. Isn't that why I went to the bench last year? Well, right. 
understand that you know we missed the playoffs, and so you know we've got to make some we've got to make some big changes here, and we really really want you back, but we're going to have to figure some other things out first. Yeah, bleep you. Yeah, that's that's my like I think that something like that is. Again, that's a simplica- uh, simplification and a dramatization um, sensation. Thank you, but I, I but I, I think that those Cha-ching! I think those are the issues. It's all of it, all of the above, and I do think that the timeline part of it is a factor. And if you know Clay's like, "Hey, Warriors, what are you thinking? Are you willing to do this or that?" And the Warriors are saying, "Well, we have to see how Plan A, B, C, D, and E go." And I'm afraid you're playing F right now, Clay. And he's like, I got your F right here. And that's how that goes. And he goes from the F to the I to the G and makes the scrub. And that's all part of it. And I'm sure that the ego plays into it. And if you're Clay Thompson, you've made almost a quarter of a billion dollars and you're a Hall of Famer and a four-time champ. And, yeah, you feel a certain way about where you still stand. And if you've got two or three other teams out there who are thinking, yeah, Clay, we'll value you. You can start. We'll pay you. We'll give you three years and all the rest of it. And your own team is saying, well, we're not seeing it that way. And we may need you to wait until all these other things either happen or don't happen before we decide. That's where the anger can come out. 